House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer, meanwhile, says that he will now hold FBI Director Christopher Wray in contempt of Congress for not allowing the full committee to view that unclassified document, which alleges then-Vice President Joe Biden was part of a $5 million criminal bribery scheme where Biden took money for policy decisions. Only Comer and ranking member Jamie Raskin were able to view this document yesterday. Comer says the document is being used as an, on, an ongoing FBI investigation. Watch this. The claims made in the document are consistent with what we found. It suggests a pattern of bribery where payments would be made through shell accounts and multiple banks. And there's a term for that. It's called money laundering. Remember, the, the, the main reason they're not wanting to make this public is because they're concerned about the source, the highly credible, and I haven't read that in a lot of outlets, the highly credible source that's been with the, been with the uh, Bureau since the Obama administration. Joining me right now is Fox News contributor, former House Speaker, and author of the brand new book, March to the Majority, which just went on sale today. Newt Gingrich is back with us. Newt, congrats on the new book. Well, thank you. I'm delighted and very excited by it. And I think it's really an important uh, explanation of the plays that allowed us to become a majority and that can be used today. So I think it's a very, very significant book. Uh, Newt, is this your 45th book? You're incredibly <laughs> prolific. Well, something like that. But I think this may be the most important book I've written because it relates so directly to the challenges we have in negotiating with President uh, Biden and so directly to the challenge we have in getting a majority in, uh, in 2024. So I, I wrote uh, <clears throat> March the Majority specifically as a playbook for how we can operate today as effectively as Ronald Reagan did and as effectively as we did uh, with the contract with America. So let me ask you about that, because it seems that the Republicans are constantly getting stonewalled. Look how hard it was for Kevin McCarthy to get the speakership, and that partly had to do with the Republicans. Look how hard it was to actually get the debt ceiling uh, deal done, signed into law finally by this president. And look how hard it is for James Comer to get, an, uh, a, a, get a document that's subpoenaed, that's not even classified. So what should the Republicans do with this constant stonewalling from Democrats. Well, I think they should dig in their, their heels and insist on the changes. You know, part of the point of, of the book, uh, March the Majority, is it took us four years to get to four consecutive balanced budgets. We didn't leap there the first three months. And I think that what Kevin McCarthy did, Speaker McCarthy, uh, in getting the debt ceiling done, the first real cuts in spending, uh, he's now going to have to police that because there are already some senators who want to break it. Uh, and I think he's, he's going to have to be tough about it. And they just have to do this every single day. I think what Chairman Comer do, is doing is right. I think if the FBI will not turn over an unclassified document, they should hold Chris Ray in contempt. Uh, and I think, the, again, you and I have discussed it before, they should kill the FBI's proposed $3.5 billion headquarters, a building larger than the Pentagon. It's an absurdity to create this, this national police that are basically are a tribute to George Orwell's 1984. It's exactly wrong, uh, and they ought to be moving in the opposite direction. But that's going to require one day at a time, ha hanging tough, uh, taking one fight at a time, including all 12 appropriations bills, uh, and insisting on the investigations actually being performed in an effective way. Yeah, this is all really important points because they are looking at the appropriations process to actually make a difference here. Can you imagine these charges being leveled at this president, this influence peddling that we understand uh, ha ha could be going on for decades? What are your thoughts in terms of the mainstream media? These are the most serious charges ever leveled at a president, and the mainstream media will not report it, Newt. Of course not. Look, you have to understand. The, the national establishment, the people who went to Harvard and Yale and Princeton, uh, the folks who belong to Skull and Bones, all of those people are united in a determination to, to retain power over the American people. And they're watching a steady upsurge of Americans who are sick and tired of a corrupt uh, elite that's trying to do things. You're seeing this, uh, frankly, with Target. Uh, you saw it with Bud Light. Uh, I think the Dodgers are going to face tremendous penalties for having a, brought in a, an anti-Catholic, anti-nun, vicious group of people. 
Uh, and I think that uh, you look at what's happening here. We know now for, uh, from the Durham report that virtually everything said about Donald Trump was a lie. And sadly, almost everything being said about Joe Biden is the truth. Uh, and yet, the FBI is trying to protect him. The Justice Department is trying to protect him. The intelligence community is trying to protect him. And it's because you have a left wing establishment that is under siege, that is losing power, and they are desperate to stay in charge. And the only way they can stay in charge is this kind of constant assault. Uh, and that's why I think the Republicans in the House in particular, who are the most conservative group in Washington, have to stand firm and have to stand united. And they're going to win because they have the power of the purse. Nothing well, gets done after, after October 1 if they don't pass the appropriations bills. Well, you make a great point, but it feels like the the Democrats are winning. It feels <clears> like <throat> they're winning and they're making a difference in protecting Joe Biden. Well, um, I, I don't know if they're winning. Uh, yeah. I think I think they're okay. I th I, look. I think we're right in the middle of a fight, and I think yeah. on the one hand you have the entire establishment trying to protect Joe Biden. On That's the other right. hand, the truth does tend to come out. Uh, America is an amazing country, and the truth is yeah. going to be that um, you know Hunter Biden had nothing to offer except his father, and he got lots right. of money from lots of dictatorships because of his father. And I think that truth will become literally impossible to avoid. Yeah, and that's that's the end of bottom line question. What did you get this money for? What is your business? We still can't identify what the heck the business was. But I got to get your take on 2024 because, okay. Newt, here we are in June, two months away from the first GOP primary debate. Former Vice President Mike Pence has officially entered the race for 2024. Yesterday, uh, you, you've, you've got uh, former Governor Chris Christie also expected to join the, this week. Well, we're expecting to hear from Chris Christie. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis not getting much of a boost after his campaign launch, uh, new Rasmussen poll finds President Trump expanding his lead once again. Now he's up 28 points on DeSantis. The Florida governor joined Brian Kilmeade's radio show yesterday, questioning Trump's chances in a uh, in a rematch. Listen to this. Got to get your take. Watch. I think that there's a lot of voters who just aren't going to vote for him, who don't like Biden. And you realize the country is going in the wrong direction, but they're not going to go there. And I think that in 2016, the voters that disliked both Trump and Hillary, they sided with Trump. I think in 2020 and 24, it'll be they dislike both, but they would probably default to Biden. So, so this is also this is also the line or the narrative of the left that Trump can't win. Meanwhile, he's up 30 points. Well, and in national polls, he's up over, over Biden by a bigger margin than DeSantis. Look, I think Governor DeSantis has been a very good governor of Florida. I think he's very successful. He's certainly done a great job with the state. I think he's found it very hard to transition to being a presidential candidate. He had a chance early on to make it one of two between he and Trump. He clearly has failed. That's why you have all of these new candidates coming in. And all of them, think of it this way, there are, two, there are two lakes here. There's a Trump lake, which is around 53, 54 percent, and there's everybody else. And the problem is that everybody else ought to be focusing on, train, on, on draining the Trump lake and making it smaller. Instead, they're all going to be competing for the same 40 percent of the vote. And, and I guarantee you, at mar a Largo, they break out the champagne every time there's a new candidate. And they would love to have 15 or 20 candidates. And I predict Trump will not be at the debates. Uh, he'll just say, you know, I'm ahead by 28, 30, 35 points. Why would I get in a stage with somebody who's at 3 percent? Uh, and the country will then basically ignore the debates. So you don't think he's going to be at this first upcoming GOP debate in, in August then? I, I don't. I mean, I would, I, my personal advice would be don't do it. Yeah. Why would you go there and give publicity to people who cannot get publicity on their own? Huh. And, and real quick before you go, New, what about all these attacks on Trump? The Manhattan DA indictment. They say more indictments are coming from other I'm states. I'm sure they are. Will that stop Trump? No. When, when you tell people that he may be indicted in Washington, D.C., a district in which he got 5 percent of the vote, so 19 out of every 20 potential jurors are anti-Trump, the average American is going to say, this is just clearly a rigged deal. And yeah. I don't think you can beat somebody with a rigged deal. All right. We will leave it there. Newt, it's always a pleasure to see you. Congrats Great. on the new book. March to the Majority is on bookshelves now. Newt Gingrich joining us Thank in New you. York. Thank you, sir.